What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So we got an injury report update when it comes to junior middleweight superstar title contender, Erickson the Hammer Lubin. Erickson Lubin, he took on undefeated Mexican superstar, junior middleweight title contender, the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora, in which Erickson Lubin was in a fight of the year candidate fight, um, which saw uh, him drop, him get dropped, and also which saw him drop uh, Erickson, uh, drop from, uh, Sebastian Fundora in the seventh round. So early in the fight, he was dropped. Late in the fight, he, in the seventh round, he uh, dropped Sebastian Fundora. Uh, in that round, in the seventh round, it actually looked like Erickson Lubin was on the verge of getting stopped himself. Um, and uh, he weathered the storm. He was able to uh, get back up, you know, uh, get back on, you know, on, on uh, track. And that's when he dropped uh, Sebastian Fundora. But with that said, uh, Erickson Lubin, man, he, you know, uh, he suffered some major, major injuries in this fight. Uh, he suffered a broken nose, broken jaw, and a separated uh, detached shoulder, which is going to see Erickson Lubin uh, require surgery. So Erickson Lubin is going to have to have surgery uh, to repair uh, his, sh his shoulder. Obviously, uh, you can clearly see his face was disfigured. Clearly, you can see his face was disfigured. Right, and you can see that you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, you can see that you know, he, he was breathing out of his mouth, his jaw was hanging, he was bleeding from his nose, he was bleeding from his uh, uh mouth, he was bleeding from uh, all places, man. His forehead was swollen, man. Uh, you know, it looked like a, a, a rhino, right? The, the middle of his forehead, right here, uh, it looked like a rhino, man. And um, you know, we know back in uh. 2017, he suffered a knockout first round loss to uh, um, Jamel Chawla, who's now the two-time junior middleweight world champion and a uh, uh, unified junior middleweight world champion who is going to go into, you know, um, our undisputed showdown with undefeated WBO uh, Argentinian star junior middleweight world champion who is, uh, is going to be a highly anticipated rematch of their first fight. So Erickson Lubin is now 24 wins, two losses, no draws, 17 wins by way of knockout twice in his career. He was stopped. He's 26 years of age now, five foot nine and a half with a 74 in inch homage. So in the ninth round, the uh, fight got stopped, you know, uh, because he just was getting dismantled in the fight. Uh, this is was definitely going to take some uh, some time and mileage off his career. This is a lot of wear and tear on his career, man. A lot of wear. A lot of tread on the tires, you know. The first knockout to Jamel Charlo was a uh, a knockout that he didn't see. It was an uppercut, short uppercut hook on the inside that he got caught with, uh, and he got knocked out in the first round. This fight, you know, uh, he took a blister in, right? He took a beating in this fight, and oddly enough, he was actually winning the fight. Okay, uh, he was putting on, in my in my opinion, one of the most heroic fights that we've seen in recent times. Right, a lot of people would have threw in the towel. He was getting fatigued. Sebastian Fedora is six foot six, uh, with an eighty inch arm reach. Okay, um, uh, he's shown that he has power. Uh, Lubin, to me, uh, a big issue to me that Lubin uh, didn't display was uh, discipline when it comes to defense. Okay, uh, he wasn't very disciplined on the inside when it comes to his defense. Uh, Sebastian Fedora is now nineteen wins, no losses, one draw, thirteen wins by way of knockout. 24 years of age, six foot six with a six with an 80 inch arm range, Okay, uh, so the Tower Inferno is his, his nickname. And so, with that said, you know, on the inside, uh, Erickson Movement wasn't very disciplined, in my opinion. Okay, uh, he wasn't. Uh, um, you know, he should not have been standing there waiting for the receipts to come back from Sebastian Fundora. Uh, he was clearly the quicker man. Okay, uh, but. He didn't display the highest of highs ring IQ, okay? Uh, he did not have to stay in the pocket with Sebastian Fundora. It was like he wanted to uh, prove a point, okay? Uh, you know, he could have used his legs more. Uh, oddly enough, Sebastian Fundora, like I stated in my last video, he's very tall, very rangy, but uh, uh, he doesn't use his height, right? The name of his game is to fight on the inside, to mix it up on the inside. He has... Uh, to, to be so tall and so rangy, you would think he would smother his own offense on the inside, but oddly enough, 
he does not smother his orphans on the inside. He actually, you know, uh, um, uh, he actually is very accurate on the inside. So where you would think that, you know, uh, um, he gives up his height, where you would think that he gives up, you know, uh, his arm reach and things of that nature, he actually doesn't, right? He actually, you know, uh, um, he actually is very good on the inside and very accurate on the inside, right? And, uh, you know, so it's very surprising to be that tall, that rangy, and be that accurate and uh, have power on the inside. It's just not, you know, uh, um, something that, you know, uh, uh, people would expect coming from, you know, uh, um, Sebastian Fondora, a guy that's six foot six with a 80 inch army. You don't expect him to be accurate and uh, uh, display punching power and have uppercuts and hooks on the inside that are accurate. You would think that that, was a, that would be a disadvantage for uh, Sebastian Fundora, but it's actually an advantage for Sebastian Fundora, okay? And uh, uh, Everson Lubin, he, he gave up his height. I mean, he gave up his advantage, which in my opinion is his, his footwork, okay? His foot speed, his hand, his hand speed, uh, his athletic ability. He's a southpaw as well, you know, um, and he has power, okay? His nickname is The Hammer, okay? And, uh, you know, um, he just, he was putting combinations together very well, okay? He was very accurate with his punches, okay? But he just simply, you know, um, was deciding to stand there and wait for the receipts when it came to, you know, uh, uh, um, Sebastian Fundora. He would catch him with combinations. He would catch him with, uh, uh, you know, big punches, big clean punches, accurate punches. But then he would give up. He would stand there and wait for the receipts after he catch Sebastian Fundora, right? He would stand there and he would give up, uh, uh, wait for Sebastian Fundora to counter him, wait for Sebastian Fundora to answer him. And he shouldn't have, okay? And while he stood there and wait for the seats, that accumulation, it started to take hold, it started to, you know, um, wear on him. He started to break down uh, uh, um, Erickson Lubin. And you can see Lubin started to fatigue. He started to get tired. You know, uh, it started to wear and tear, it started to show. And uh, ultimately, he paid for it, right? And this could be a long-term effect, actually, on his career. Okay, we don't know, you know, uh, how much of a uh, effect this is going to have on his career moving forward. It's unfortunate, right? Because uh, Erickson Lubin should be a world champion at some point in time. You know, uh, Erickson Lubin, you would, you know, um, he got all the talent, all the skill, all the art, uh, all the athletic ability, the power. You know, he just didn't display the necessary defense. Uh, to beat, you know, Sebastian Fundora, and ultimately, physically, he paid the price for that, okay? Physically, he paid the ultimate price for it, which saw him get stopped, okay? It saw him get dropped. Uh, there's a lot of tread, a lot of tread that was taken off the tires now uh, in this fight for uh, Erickson Lubin, okay? Uh, and it's unfortunate because I truly believe if he would've used his, uh, his, his foot speed, if he would've used his athletic abilities, uh, uh, if he would have used, you know, um, the rain, he, he couldn't control the pace of the fight. Okay, he actually uh, uh, couldn't control uh, the pace of the fight. You know, uh, and, you know, he was showing it, he was displaying. When he was using a jab to the solar plex when it, when it first started, uh, when the fight first started, he was using a jab to the solar plex. Uh, he was using, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, combinations, changing levels. You know, although he was at a height and Omri's disadvantage, he clearly was the better pure boxer on the outside, okay? Uh, it's, it, again, I know it's shocking to many people to see that Erickson Lubin at five foot nine and a half with a 74 inch arm reach had the advantage on the outside boxing a guy who's six foot six with an 80 inch arm reach advantage. But that's just the case. That's the nature of the sport of boxing is styles make fights and, uh, Fandora, his 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 advantage is on the inside. Uh, he he, you know, he can see everything. Uh, his punches are coming downhill when all of your punches are going uphill, uh, and that's an advantage that Sebastian Fandora has. Okay, and again, when Lubin was jabbing to the solar place, countering with the left hand, coming with the right hook, you know, straight left hand, he was clearly the better pure boxer. 
But when he stood there with a high guard on the inside, chest to chest with Fandora, he was getting hit clean with uppercuts and hooks. And ultimately he paid the ultimate price. He stopped, got stopped in the ninth round, suffered a broken jaw, which is being disputed. Some people say it is a broken jaw. Some people say it's not. Uh, it's definitely a broken nose and a broken shoulder. So let's see what's uh, next for Erickson Lubin moving forward. I'm sure he's gonna have to be out the ring for at least uh, uh, the next eight months, okay? Medically, he's more than likely gonna have to be out for six months, but you tack on uh, rehab and things of that nature, it's gonna be a long while for Erickson Lubin at the back, to get back to the top. So let's see how this unfolds and plays out for his career moving forward. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment in the comment section, let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share the videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.